Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. A couple of months ago, we did a post series called the four phases of the pitch. That is the load phase, the reach phase, the track phase, and the fire and drive phase. Now, each one of these phases has to be hit in its entirety during the continuous accelerating movement of the pitch. Today, we're going to be talking about the load phase. Now, just as a reminder, the four phases of the pitch are the load phase, where I get all of my weight into my drive leg. For me, I'm a right-hand pitcher. That's my right leg. And you'll look at what my load looks like here. Both heels are up off the ground. Both knees are flexed. I look like a sprinter getting ready to come out of the box. That's my load phase. 90 to 95% of my weight is in my drive leg. For me, right-hand pitcher, right leg. Left-hand pitcher, left leg. I can move, pick up my stride foot because the vast majority of my weight is in my drive leg. From here, I'm going to aggressively push back on that pitching rubber. My stride is initiated by a push back with my drive foot, not a reach forward with my stride foot. Very important to remember because that's what we're going to be talking about today. So what I mean is I'm going to get into my load position. I'm going to push and I'm going to glide off that pitching rubber. I'm stopping in the reach phase and you will notice that I am now close to three feet off the pitching rubber with my dry foot never having left the ground. That is legal. That gives me a tremendous advantage as a pitcher because it gets me that much closer to the batter. So the glide off the pitching rubber is a direct result of an aggressive load. I used to work with a great hitting coach who used to say, you cannot unload what you have not loaded. And that is really true as it, as it relates to windmill pitching. So a number of our advanced students have commented on the fact that it seems as though their velocity is down, even though when they use a radar gun, and we don't love radar guns, but when they do use a radar gun, it doesn't seem to indicate that their velocity is actually down. Well, what could be causing that? Well, we're going to talk about that. About a year and a half, two years ago, they changed the rule about how your feet have to be in contact with the pitching rubber. It used to be that both your dry foot and your stride foot, both feet had to be in contact with the pitching rubber, like I am right now. Now, I personally think that this is a great way to initiate a really powerful load. Your power comes from the ground up, ground force reaction. And if you're not getting a really aggressive load, you're putting yourself at a big disadvantage. So here's how we used to be. And now, since the rule has changed, we're finding that a lot of our pitchers are starting with their stride foot, foot and a half, two feet off the pitching rubber. Now, look what happened to my body when I just took my stride leg and I took it off the pitching rubber and I moved it back a foot, a foot and a half, two feet. It shifted all my weight backwards. I can now pick up this foot, but I can't pick up my stride foot. Remember the previous load, sprinter's position. I can pick up my stride foot very easily. Can't pick up my dry foot because 95% of my weight is in that foot. That's what enables me to generate that ground force. If I'm back here, and remember as we come forward off the pitching rubber, we want everything working together. We want to be driving that pitching rubber backwards as both hands come up the front side of the circle and my stride leg goes out toward my target. Everything in sequence, everything together. If my stride foot is way back here, everything has to wait for it to get there. And I find a lot of the times that our pitchers are getting what they think is into a really good load position, they're doing what we call rock back ready forward. When 
our pitchers stand on the pitching rubber and get ready to take a sign, we want them in this position. Nice and relaxed. Weight forward into my drive foot. I can pick up my stride foot. Both feet are in contact with the pitching rubber or not. But look at how far back I went here. Maybe six inches, maybe eight inches. Not a foot and a half, two feet. So from here, I can still get a really good aggressive load. A rock back. Ready forward. And really, when you're talking about rock back, you're rocking and then getting back to where you were initially when you were taking your sign and then getting even more forward with an aggressive load. Ready forward. And you're coming exploding off the pitching rubber and getting into your reach and track position. And again, you will notice, I am now three feet off that pitching rubber. If I land with a really good glide, three feet off the pitching rubber, and my normal stride length is another three and a half, four feet, I'm getting close to the end of the eight foot circle. What an advantage to you as a windmill pitcher to be delivering your pitches, not from 41 feet away, which is what's happening with a lot of our advanced students now, because their stride foot is so far off the pitching rubber, that as they rock back, they don't have enough time. Remember now, 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 now my load's taking place where I don't want it. It's in my stride leg. I can pick up my dry foot. Now, instead of getting a really good forward load and being able to drive that pitching rubber backwards, I'm basically walking off the pitching rubber, and that's what we're seeing. Our girls are landing maybe two inches off the pitching rubber, then delivering their pitch and driving to. So instead of being able to deliver your pitch from 37 or 38 feet away, depending upon how long your, your stride is, how aggressive you are coming off that pitching rubber, you could be even closer than that. You could get to all the way to the end of the eight foot circle. We want our pitchers having as great an advantage as possible. So delivering your 60 mile an hour pitch from 41 feet away is not going to be nearly as effective as delivering that same pitch from 37 or 38 feet. You're going to make your 60 mile an hour pitch look like a 64 or 65 mile an hour pitch if you're that much closer to the bat. Power comes from the ground up and it all starts with your load. I hope that this has been useful. We'd love to hear your comments on this. Talk to you next time.